All right, welcome everybody to today's live webinar, Array and Positive Technologies, Virtual App Firewalls with Guaranteed Performance. So today's agenda, um, we're going to do some quick introductions and housekeeping, talk a little bit about who's on today's call, um, and also uh, some things such as uh, if you have questions, uh, comments, things of like that, how we're going to handle that, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I see some of the people on the call, you know, I recognize and, you know, have some awareness of Array, maybe, you know, have some awareness of PT, but I also see a fair number of new folks as well. So I want to do a very brief background on Array Networks as a company, uh, give you that company overview and build a bit of awareness around Array Networks, who we are, what we do. Um, and one of the things, we're going to be talking about the virtual application firewall from PT. Um, and that actually runs on what Array calls its Network Functions Platform product, right? So before we hop into the PT product and what it can do, I want to provide the context of the environment in which it's going to run um, and give you a little bit of background on uh, the business drivers for the Array Network Functions Platform. Uh, and then I'll, of course, want to turn it over to PT, um, and they're going to be able to uh, describe their application firewall product, uh, but also I think very importantly describe why it's a best of breed application firewall and what are some of those things that uh, makes it very unique uh, or visionary, I should say, but uh, Roy will talk a little bit more about that when we get to that point. Um, and after we do that, then I want to tie things all back together and I want to talk about, you know, the overall value, right, of the Array Networks Function Platform, the PT Application Firewall, and potentially other Array virtual functions, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well, right? So all that stuff comes together to create something that's greater than the sum of its parts, right? The whole solution has uh, unique value together, so we'll tie things up like that. And um, if all goes well, we will have left, um, you know, a good chunk of time to field any questions that uh, you may have entered uh, uh, or that you may have had as we, uh, as we have gone through today's presentation. So with that, just a, a quick bit of, of housekeeping here. Uh, on today's call, my name is Paul Anderson. I'm a Senior Director of Marketing here for Array Networks, and I'll be uh, presenting, you know, a good chunk of the material here today. Uh, also presenting uh, a, a good chunk today will be Roy Duckles uh, from Positive Technologies. And also on the call with me today is Rich Siegel, Array's uh, Vice President of Sales and Business Development. And reason being is, you know, Rich and Roy were kind of the drivers behind this thing, right, and got this thing rolling. And now we're up and running and, you know, beginning to bring this thing to market. So uh, we have Rich here as well in case there are any questions that come up with respect to, gosh, anything having to do with the partner partnership he may know that I, I may not know. Um, so with that, what I'd like to do before I jump into the meat of the presentation is I'd like to give both Rich and Roy just a couple of minutes or, you know, a minute each to say a few words and uh, introduce at a very high level this new partnership and, um, you know, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what the benefits are. So, uh, Rich, maybe you go first. Okay. So, as Paul mentioned, I'm responsible for both sales and business development. And my most important project uh, at this point in time is adding best-of-breed third-party security solutions to our platform. And the first one that we've actually added, I've been working together with Roy, even though he's a Brit, I still work together with him. Um, <laughs> and we uh, we are excited about that relationship. It, it definitely is a best of breed uh, web application firewall. It's up in the top right quadrant of Gartner. And we are going to be working very closely together, uh, meeting in the channel as well. So I'm excited about the relationship with, uh, with um, PT. Did we do the uh, press release yet? Uh, we did. We did that. Uh, we did the announcement officially on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday of this week. So it's official, and we're up and running, and we got some of these deliverables are now coming through. Um, so, you know, I'll just mention it early here uh, for everybody that's on the webinar today. Uh, not only will you get the presentation from today's webinar, but we have a joint solution brief that, you know, we, we finished. That's official. And, um, you know, it's going to make some of the points you're going to hear about today, but... Um, you know, great reading uh, regarding this joint solution, something you can share with your teams as well. Over to you, Roy. Okay, thanks, Rich. 
Um, yeah, just to add to what Rich was saying, so I'm responsible for developing um, business relationships, both for distribution channel and technology relationships for positive technologies. And the reason we're excited about the relationship with Array Networks is because it gives us a better go-to-market strategy in terms of how we can address new IT security issues with you know, products that are designed to actually address specific areas of IT security. A lot of companies out there create hybrid products that um, do a little bit of what we do, but not to the same degree and depth and capability. So by working closely with Array, we can uh, address a large sector of the market and provide a much stronger IT security proposition that is probably available from any of our competitors. So that's why it's important that we recognize that we have very good strengths. And when you bring those strengths together, you get a very good comprehensive capability. So uh, again, working closely with Rich and the team, we found it you know, really good for us to uh, develop this relationship with Array. Excellent. Thanks, Roy. And so with that said, let us dive into the meat of the presentation. So a little bit about Array Networks. Array Networks has actually been around um, you know, quite a while now. Um, and in a similar fashion that we're now pioneering uh, you know, what we're calling the network functions platform. This is, you know, the new technology from Array that we've been developing over the last couple of years um, and, and breaking some new ground with that platform. In a very similar way, Array was the first to introduce the, uh, what we would call the integrated traffic management appliance, um, you know, way back in 2000, right? So if you think way back to 2000, uh, basically everybody else was just doing simple load balancing, right? Um, and Array was actually the first to say, you know, there's a number of these uh, layer four through seven services that you know, everyone's got an independent, you know, standalone appliance for that kind of stuff, whether it be the SSL accelerators, caching, compression, there's a lot of stuff going on then. We said, hey, you know, a lot of those things, it makes sense, maybe we can integrate those things into, you know, one solution, run it up the stack once, do the layer four through seven services, and then pass it on to, uh, to the server. Um, so, you know, we basically, you know, pioneered that concept, have been doing that for a long time. So when you hear Array talk about our you know, load balancer or, you know, so that's what came to be known. I mean, a lot of people now call that an application delivery controller, right? And now uh, you look at a number of different vendors that are offering that solution. They're all, you know, doing a very similar thing. Uh, maybe trying to squeeze too much into it, and we'll go into that in a little bit as well, right? So but we've been doing that for a long time, and that's a core expertise of Array. Uh, very similarly, um, we've also been doing a, a secure remote access or a secure access product for you know, well over 10, 12 years as well. So uh, both our ADC product and our SSL VPN product are customer proven, time proven, very robust, very feature rich, very scalable, high performance, reliable, very cost effective, you name it. So very solid products in their own right. Um, just to go back a little bit, so founded in 2000, we're headquartered here in um, uh, in California, in Silicon Valley Bay Area, California, in Milpitas, California, and a good size organization, 250, over 250 employees, uh, but we are a global company, right, so we have a good number of employees here in North America, but also, um, you know, presence in Europe, in China, India, Japan, as well as other ASEAN countries and in some other markets as well, so it is a global company uh, for some of you that are maybe joining us from some of those markets. Um, in, in terms of overall the market that we serve, um, you know, it, it's evolving. We're not 100% sure where to categorize the network functions platform, you know, what market exactly does that sit in. Um, but, you know, considering our history, I would say network functions platform and, you know, app delivery and security um, is basically, uh, uh, you know, defines the space that we're in. Uh, the products, and so you can see right there, the ADCs, We've been doing them a long time. The SSL VPN, doing those a long time. Uh, now pioneering what we think is a new approach and some new technologies uh, with what we call our network functions platform product. Uh, that's been our focus for the last two years, um, and uh, really going to be, you know, as Rich mentioned, you know, our focus going forward with building the third-party ecosystem around it. Um, segments. Traditionally, we've been in the enterprise segment as well as the, the public sector uh, arena with strength in, you know, healthcare, financial services, education, state, local government, things of that nature. 
but something to note is that um, uh, with the emergence of the cloud, we have many new customer opportunities and many customers that are buying our products and services and using them not just to scale, let's say, software as a service, um, but also to uh, purchase and deploy our solutions in order to offer infrastructure services or to provide uh, cloud hosts that manage services. So with the cloud has opened up a, kind of a new front in terms of uh, uh, the markets that Array Network serves. Uh, very strong technology, not just the technology around the new network functions platform, but um, yeah, just to pick one example, right, we, we don't take the easy path. We go the extra mile to develop technologies and implementations that um, uh, are both higher performing and more secure. Uh, one that I like to call attention to is our proprietary SSL stack, right? We don't use the open SSL. Uh, many people that, you know, relied on that or leveraged that have been susceptible to things like Heartbleed, Ghost, Shellshock, Bash, other vulnerabilities that uh, required themselves and their customers to do some patching. We have our own SSL stack. Um, neither us nor our customers had to do anything when these vulnerabilities came to market, right? So we developed our own. It's faster. It's more secure. Um, and that's an example. We, we take that approach uh, to a number of different elements of our solutions. And again, kind of wrap things up a little bit. Um, we've been around for quite a while, and you know, and we have a global presence. And so, um, you know, right now we last count we had just over 5,000 customers uh, worldwide. And those those are customers that are under support, actively using our product, not customers that may have used our product at one point in time. So, um, below you can see, you know, kind of a healthy example there of. Uh, you know, soft layer IBM, which is now they're calling that Bluemix, right? Um, all the load balancing services offered by soft layer, Bluemix, those are all built on array technologies. And, you know, I mentioned healthcare, financial services, technology, you name it, enterprise customers. You see a few examples of that. So, you know, uh, maybe I spent a little bit more time there than uh, I wanted to, but I uh, want to give you guys a, uh, just a background about array networks as a company. So, here we start you know, the context of today's discussion. So um, software or virtual appliances to be specific. So whether we're talking about networking or app delivery or security, and I'm using, I pulled here a Gartner example, and this happens to be for virtual ADCs, obviously because this is a space array is in, but I, this holds, you know, more or less, right? Whether we're talking about, um, you know, an application firewall or you know, maybe even next-gen firewall or um, ADCs, SSL VPN, WAN optimization, any of these kinds of functions, we're seeing a greater demand for um, a software, software implementation of it or a virtual appliance or a public cloud utility-based consumption model for some of these services, right? And you can see that here as we go out 2018, 2019, 2020, that, you know, software is the fastest-growing element not only that, it's eating into a little bit in terms of, you know, the traditional hardware-based approach uh, to providing these services. So 2019, if you combine the blue and the yellow with, with kind of the turquoise and the purple there, that's about half and half, right? So you know, what does that tell you? Well, there's, there's people, and, and maybe what I'll do here is I'll, I'll hop ahead a slide, right, and talk a little bit about what's happening there, right, so and the pros and the cons of each approach. So. Yeah, people really like the software approach or the virtual appliance approach. Why do they like that? Well, it's more agile, right? Um, it's portable. I can take that license, that software, and I can put it on this server. If I need to move it, I can put it on that server. Um, you know, if I need more of them, I can deploy more of them as I need them. I can pay as I go. Um, especially in the public cloud, you can do, you know, utility consumption. Um, I can spin them up, I can spin them up, up, spin them down remotely. I don't have to do a truck roll and send someone out there to install something in a rack, right? Many reasons like this, it's just more flexible, perhaps it's more efficient. I can have a, a homogenous virtualized data center infrastructure um, and I can run whatever I want on these servers and it's very uniform and I have control over it with uh, perhaps some, uh, you know, like a vCenter or, or some sort of orchestration suite that I have control over. So agility, that's its forte, and that's what's driving um, demand uh, for that deployment model, right? Okay, but there's a trade-off, and that's this slide here, which is um, performance is the trade-off. Um, if you look at the traditional purpose-built networking appliance, yeah, it's purpose-built, it's got, you know, select components designed for more compute-intensive networking and security functions, it's hardware-accelerated, 
um, guaranteed performance, right, to get that higher level of performance, guaranteed performance. And if you look at the virtual appliances or the software, well, why is it that they take a performance hit, right? Well, they're running on general purpose commodity servers, right, that were designed to run, I don't know, application workloads, right? Um, you know, you have a hypervisor overhead. Um, you're going to take right off the bat, you're going to have a, a performance haircut just on that, right? And then you load up different networking and security on it or application workloads on it. And once those are all loaded, they start to compete amongst themselves, right? So now they're taking from each other. And you, know, you got the hypervisor competing with the application workloads, competing with the networking and security functions. You're just not going to get the level of performance and you're not going to get the guaranteed performance. So here's the trade off. And so what we're finding then is that we do get, you know, just anecdotally, I'll talk about us and our experience with our customers, is that we get customers that come to us and they say, you know, I, this time around I want to go software. I, wanna, I want the virtual appliance, right? And, we, we, you know, we dig around a little bit and we look at, um, you know, what's changed about their deployment, right? Um, how complex is their configuration? Uh, how many end users or clients are there? Um, how many, um, is it very SSL intensive? And so on. And we go down that list and, and, and look at, how, you know, that deployment and we go, well, you know, we could do that in software, right? I mean, we can deploy X number of eCPU, we can do X number of instances, we can do this, we can do that and get you to where you need to be, or it can give you that one appliance. And that solves the whole problem right there. And it's cheaper and simpler. And in some cases, you know, the performance weighs out, right? And they, and they end up going that route, even though they perhaps they want to go virtual. And of course, the, the opposite is true as well. You know, we talk about, oh, this is for a, a staging environment or a dev environment, or this is going very close to an application. So it's, it's farther away from the edge, right? It only needs to do a few things. Yeah, great. Go ahead and use the virtual. That's great. But there is a trade-off right now, and so that's where we're at. And, okay, so what are some of the areas where maybe you want to use, take a virtual approach, but you can't? Uh, because you need the performance, right? And some of the ones we've identified, and this is through, you know, working with customers, talking to analysts, and, and so on, is application security, right? Uh, Compute-intensive HTTPS encryption and decryption, compute-intensive layer 7 attack prevention, such as application firewalls that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, another case is business-critical applications, right? Um, there are certain applications where they need to be up and running. The benefits that you get from, you know, let's say a software implementation, yeah, it's a little bit more agile and yeah, it's kind of cool, um, but the fact of the matter is is that those applications have to run. They need to have the headroom so that if something happens, they can continue to run. And th maybe the cost savings or the agility benefits that you get from a software approach, they just simply don't outweigh having to have those business critical applications up and running, especially where they're handling high volumes of very important you know, secure transactions, let's say. So reliability and headroom to give the 24-7 uptime for business critical apps, guaranteed performance uh, for essential functions such as an ADC and a WAF, right? Um, you know, these are, especially with more complex configurations, these are more compute intensive and you want to make sure that they have the guaranteed performance and higher performance they need to operate in their power band. And the last one I'll touch on is we do have a number of, you know, we talked about software, and this is a perfect example of it, and we have other MSP customers, other cloud-hosted providers of networking and security services, and many of these target niche, like, well, I don't want to say niche markets, but they, tar they target, let's say, a group of enterprise customers in a particular vertical that may have compliance requirements and higher levels of requirements, right? And they want SLAs. So, you know, best effort type approaches uh, where you're competing with other customers and taking performance away from each other and performance is bogging down, it doesn't fly for these enterprise customers. So, um, you know, you need to have that performance. You can't trade performance for agility when you're servicing those types of customers. There are more, uh, but increasingly we're seeing that, yeah, today people have to make that trade off between performance and agility. But in a couple years, people are going to get tired of that. They're going to want both. They always want everything. They want the best of both worlds. And in many of these examples here, what you really need is agility at scale. So you know, that's, that's the context and the pretext for what Array is bringing to market, the challenge that we're solving for, right? We're eliminating that trade-off with what we call our network functions platform. 
Um, and you can see it's sitting here at the intersection of agility and scale or performance, right? So we have, what do we have? We have, and we call this our AVX series, our network functions platform. We have a multi-tenant virtualized environment. So this um, appliance that you see here can support up to 32 virtual machines, okay? But the way that we implement this appliance is what makes the difference. We can provide a higher level of performance for virtualized network functions or virtual appliances, and we can also provide guaranteed performance for each VM, for each function that's riding on that VM. And I'll talk a little bit more about that now. So these are the three kind of pillars or tenets of this network functions platform solution. It's a virtualized platform, hardware appliance, but a hypervisor-based virtual machine environment, but purpose-built for app delivery, networking, and security. So again, businesses are desiring the agility of uh, software, but increasingly aware of the need for agility at scale and greater cost efficiency. Guaranteed performance, key differentiator here. We do dedicated CPU, dedicated memory, dedicated SSL, dedicated interfaces per VM. And on certain things like the interfaces and SSL, we take advantage of things, uh, techniques including SRIOV to get that higher level of performance. On top of all that, we partition off reserved resources for hypervisor management. So what's driving that is not being taken away from the networking and security workloads and impacting their performance. So, you know, private clouds need guaranteed performance for mission critical apps. Public clouds need guaranteed performance for customer SLAs and some of the other things I touched on in the previous slide. Finally, and this ties perfectly into, or, or segues perfectly into, uh, you know, today's discussion about positive technology application firewall running on Array's platform, we have an open architecture for the platform. So we support Array or third-party functions. So you can run our VAPV, that's our virtual ADC or load balancer. You can run our VXAG, um, that's our virtual SSL VPN, other Array functions, okay? But you can also run third-party functions from uh, the third-party ecosystem that we're building out. So, you know, host best of breed, talking about that today, open source, value-oriented, doesn't matter. It's up to, use case dictates, it's up to what meets the needs of uh, that particular customer. So businesses aren't one size fits all. Some want best of breed, some want value, other want cost-effective, DevOps-centric. It doesn't matter, it can run on the platform. And this is just a little bit under the hood, um, reiterating some of the things I mentioned, but I said you can do up to 32 VMs, yeah, we have four different sizes. You can mix and match entry, small, medium, large, depending on the need of the particular application or use case, or depending on the requirement of the array or third-party function, right? So we, we, we map what those things need to uh, the size of the instance that they're going to run on. Um, pay as you go. Um, you can buy the capacity on the platform as you go. Uh, so very cloud-centric. You can do the multiple network functions, as I've talked about, and also, um, Again, as I mentioned, full resource segmentation, so we partitioned off resources that power the, uh, the hypervisor and we assign the CPU, SSL, memory interfaces per VM. So a little bit of a look uh, underneath the hood there. And again, this is again a very like a visualization uh, right here. You can see uh, the AVX series hardware running the Array, array OS, virtualized using the KVM hypervisor. In this case, you can see a couple of array networking and security functions riding on the platform. I've popped in the uh, PT application firewall right there. And, you know, just to make the point, you know, perhaps some other vendors that uh, potentially uh, could also run on the, on the platform. And um, just tying back into the pay-as-you-go, not only do we allow you to pay-as-you-go for capacity on the system, we've got three different sizes of systems, uh, small, medium, large. I talked about 32 VMs. Uh, you go down a size, you, you essentially divide by two, go down another side, essentially divide by two, um, but still very flexible and very powerful in terms of the performance and uh, the number of different VMs and uh, different sizes of uh, virtual machines that you can load on the platforms. And again, the best of all worlds, right? I talked about the dedicated appliance, I talked about the virtual appliance, and Roy actually touched on the integrated appliance a little bit as well, and I compare those to the network functions platform. So. You look at a dedicated appliance, we talked about it, performance, best of breed, yeah, you, got, you can pick up those advantages, but the trade-off is agility and cost is probably still not very good. 
virtual appliances, you get the best of breed and the agility, but you give up on you know performance and probably a little bit on cost. The integrated appliance, this is a great point here that Roy touched on, which is that many times a vendor that tries to do all these different functions we've been talking about today are really only good at one, maybe two. The rest of the stuff they offer as kind of a vertically integrated solution into one, no, not as good, right? So you're not picking up that best of breed. You try to do it all in one, performance goes down, agility, it's still an appliance, cost. A lot of these vendors are still very expensive. So if you compare that to the platform, you can deploy best of breed. You get the guaranteed performance, agility, because you can load what you want, different sizes, move them around, et cetera, and cost is very, uh, very cost effective as well. So with that, that is a, hopefully a good setup to uh, handing it off here to Roy. And if all goes well, I'm going to pass the controls over to Roy and uh, let him lead a discussion not only on positive technologies and their application firewall, but hopefully then tying it back into um, you know, what I've talked about with respect to running it on a race platform. Roy, over to you. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, I'll just add to what we were saying there when that, that last slide when people were talking about integrated solutions. I think if you put IT into context with other industries, you know, you never find uh, an industry now that would build an entire product themselves. And I'm talking about maybe if you look at the aircraft industry or the car industry, you know, they have realized that to make something that works is to use best of breed components or other, you know, companies to help contribute. And I think when uh, the Dreamliner was launched, I think Boeing actually only produced about 30% of that aircraft. They might have the you know, technology and the design capability, but they recognize their limitations. So I think that's key when we look at some of our competitors, that we remember that sometimes you can't have a one-size-fits-all or be a jack-of-all-trades. You, know, you do need specialist companies that focus specifically on areas uh, of IT security. So what I'm going to put, um, you know, the part I'm going to talk about now, I'll talk about positive technologies, give you a little bit of background about the company, and then talk about one of the specific products that we're working closely with, with Array, which is the applica uh, application firewall or WAF. Right. So it, it doesn't click down, unfortunately, uh, Paul. No, it does. There you go. Right. So a bit about our company, Positive Technologies. Um, over 700 people across the globe have uh, been in, in business more than 15 years. And we're actually one of the largest IT uh, security research companies in Europe. So uh, we produce an annual report each year based on all the uh, pen testing, auditing, and testing that we do on both company, customer, and external systems uh, in IT. And from that, we disclose all the areas we find both in business vulnerabilities, application vulnerabilities, physical hardware vulnerabilities. The company's been around uh, developed a large range of product sets based on our research, and we've designed our products not to have the same vulnerabilities or bypass capability that we find in other people's products. So we've actually looked at how things work in, in depth right down to a granular level, and then we've designed our own products in the last eight years not to be um, vulnerable to the same, same problems. So similar to... Um, to Array, we've got over a 1,000 customers in different verticals globally, and we also have uh, close technology partnerships where we work with some of the big vendors, uh, you know, again, looking at how we engage with them. Just a, a, as a matter of interest, last year alone, through our own research and looking at other people's products, we found over 200 zero-day vulnerabilities uh, across the range of things. So this is our sort of DNA. The whole company is based around analyzing and looking at IT security, and we look at you know, everyone else's products, including our own, to see where the failings are. So just talking about the context of web applications, anyone who logs onto the web will know that they're going through a web portal or a web page, and web applications are completely essential for business. So again, we part of our research, you'll see the stats there, we did a web application vulnerability stats for 2016. You'll see that obviously banking and finance uh, come out top there, but government was another one that was heavily hit. So most organizations are using some form of web application to get their business recognized or to interact 
with their customers. I think the key thing to remember is that the web was never designed to be interactive. It was designed to be uh, an outward facing product. It was there to deliver information. It was never designed to be interactive. It was never designed for people to actually communicate, place orders, and do all the other things that they do on the web. Everybody uses the web, um, whether it's self-service portals or retail or commerce, etc. Uh, you know, uh, in, into systems management, we're, we're talking about there are um, where you might be managing your own computer systems, you might have IT security products that have a front end admin console or management console that's web based, you might be doing that remotely if you're a, a network provider or a, an MSSP. So again, the web is everywhere you go. And, and the issue with that is that um, web applications, because they're essential for business, they need to be very fast. Um, when companies are writing their applications, deploying applications, and using those applications, they also need to be available. So anyone who's trying to access something, I think the turnoff time on a web page is about 20 seconds now. If you don't get the information you need at a rate of knots, you're um, prepared to just you know, actually click away from it. And the other thing is, because of that, they need to be dynamic. And by that, what we mean is that you have to change web pages very quickly. If you're a, a rapidly moving retailer and you have a, an offer, a special offer on all this, uh, a festive or seasonal uh, opportunity to sell certain products, you need to have a, a development uh, team that are able to supply dynamic, fast and available websites. And if you look at some of the sort of feedback from that, companies that treat application development and deployment as a, a strategic requirement of their business definitely achieve competitive advantage. So companies are making sure that web applications are there very quickly and uh, making them available. Now the problem with that is how fast and how available and how dynamic do these websites have to be? Well, to give you some examples, uh, Google, they change their, well, they deploy web applications into their infrastructure several times a week. Uh, Facebook, probably on average about twice a day, they're deploying different web applications into their production environment. And Amazon, believe it or not, are deploying on average about every 12 seconds, they're putting different web pages or web applications into their environment. The average that we've seen come back from most companies is about three times a week. But um, again, that gives you an idea of how rapidly people are deploying web applications into an operational environment. And the problem with that is that all these frequent changes create vulnerabilities. And you, know, you can't get it right 100% of the time. So if you're creating web pages or internal uh, inter-system pages or any application that you're deploying out there uh, with vulnerabilities, then who's going to exploit that? So if these vulnerabilities aren't trapped at the code development stage or they're not trapped when they're actually deployed as a front end, then obviously the person that's going to come after them are the hackers. And hackers generally just test for exploits or bugs that can be found in a web page. And they'll do that using vulnerability scanners that they can get off the web. They'll do it just by actually tapping code into response fields to try and find a way to get into your back-end systems. Now, if you look at what Verizon found last year, um, there's a lot of people are still spending a lot of time um, putting endpoint protection in place. They seem to think that some of the modern technologies on the endpoint are going to protect them. But as you can see from last year's Verizon data breach report, over 40% of the breaches that they recorded were web app based attacks. Now, this also is quite a concern because most of these attacks are quite simplistic. They either use path traversal, they use SQL injection, they use cross-site uh, cross scripting, which are all known methods of getting into a web page or into an application itself. So the issue that most companies have is that they're trying to deploy systems faster and faster but every time they're deploying them, they're putting the vulnerabilities actually into those systems that make them vulnerable again. And in the UK, there was a large communications company called TalkTalk. Talk. They were breached through a very simple web application. And when it was investigated, it was a 15-year-old boy that had found a simple way to do some SQL injection. And I'm sure TalkTalk Talk is a large organization and spent millions of pounds and dollars on IT security, but they weren't looking at the simple effort, you know, the simple attack method that a lot of these hackers use. So if you look at what Gartner say about why web application firewalls are needed, 
again, this covers most of the things that um, you know, we're actually promoting. So a, a web application firewall needs to protect public facing as well as internal used web applications. It needs to protect from what they call self-inflicted vulnerabilities. This is when people who are developing the code or you know, if you're using third party companies to develop web applications, they're not checking the, the applications before they're going into a production environment. The other thing, whenever you put the word firewall into a discussion, people assume it's a network defense. This isn't. This is application defense. So this is layer four to seven. So because of that, an application firewall can protect against application DDoS attacks as well. And also an application firewall needs to evolve or learn because people are changing the way they design their web pages and applications. And the benefits of that is if you have a system that actually is learning or has machine learning or intelligence, you can protect against unknown attacks as well as known. And you can also do certain things to make sure you reduce the amount of noise, which is also an overhead if you've got a SOC team that need to monitor this. And it allows your teams actually to respond quicker with less impact. So these are the Gartner statements as to why people should look at application firewalls. In terms of ourselves, um, this product we have, our application firewall is fairly new. Uh, it's been around just over three years. And we developed it you know, from the ground up. This isn't similar to any other application firewall on the market. Um, we made a lot of uh, decisions as to how it should operate. For example, we don't use signatures. We, do, we use machine learning, artificial intelligence. We use things like correlation and behavioral analysis. So we've taken this to a new level in terms of how an application firewall is seen. And you can see that Gartner has given us a good reference there saying organizations are looking for high security but should, for, uh, first should consider adding positive technologies to their shortlist. So we're quite pleased about that. And we've been in the Gartner Magic Quadrant as a visionary now for the last two years, and we're currently the only visionary in that quadrant. So that's quite an achievement for a new product. So what makes it different? Um, well, we offer superior protection. As I say, we have a, a security model that allows the system to learn very quickly. We use SIM-style correlation. Uh, we use things like u uh, user uh, and behavior analysis, and we have our own vulnerability scanners. Uh, again, concepts that you won't find in some of the older technologies around application firewalls. Things that we can also do that, uh, again, only we offer is that we can do forensic mode. We can look at existing uh, web logs, and we can just take those from existing web servers, and we can analyze them to see if systems have already been breached or if they have uh, vulnerabilities built into them. And the correlation, again, is quite key there because we can look at where attack chains have come from and we can actually filter through those and find out which ones are a higher priority, higher priority or lower priority. So because we do a lot of things automatically and with less complexity, uh, it's far quicker in terms of its response and capability. This is another key differentiator from us, you know, from some of our competitors. We have the capability to look at uh, vulnerabilities that we detect, and we can actually apply a virtual patch to those vulnerabilities. Now, this is important because a lot of the ways that current WAFs work is they'll find a vulnerability, they'll then raise an alert through either a SIM solution or uh, independently, and then the DevOps team or the coding team will analyze that vulnerability and then write some repair code or remediation code to fix it. We do that in real time almost, in where we can actually look at a vulnerability, we can test the vulnerability uh, and fix it with a virtual patch. The key thing there is that because we actually retest the vulnerability after we've detected it and see that it's now secure, it allows the DevOps teams to actually have chance to fix it in their own time. So again, that's quite a unique capability within our product. And finally, because um, we can protect applications, users, and all the system areas, we're not just looking at the outward-facing web front ends. We're actually looking at all the systems, all the web applications, and how they interoperate, and how users are using them. So that's quite key, again, in terms of how we present the product. I mean, there's a long list of things that we do that our competitors don't do, but I won't get into the granular detail today. So again, just a quick summary, um, the product itself has a list of areas that it uh, gives it an advantage again, which is why Gartner have given it such a good review. There is a large market there. Again, this is Gartner figures. Gartner estimates that the market's growing 
quite a rate of knots. Uh, I think the key thing that we found is that looking at certain companies, they're expecting a lot of companies to spend more on application security in the next few months. This is again uh, a large market to get into. So for us, working with Array gives us a, a good platform to help develop this market and it also gives us a good discussion point when we go and meet some of our customers. So thank you for that. Thank you, Roy. Give me a quick second here to take control back. See if this works here. Very good. So to finish things off, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about maybe a couple different solutions or a couple different deployment models or ways in which the PT application firewall can be deployed on the Array platform. Uh, but also in conjunction with um, you know, array solutions such as the load balancer app delivery controller or SSL VPN and so on and so forth. So, you know, here we have an example of ADC plus WAF for business critical apps, right? And, uh, you know, this is good because it, it, it actually it's reinforcing the comments that I made earlier and, and also the comments that Roy made regarding, um, you know, these integrated solutions that try to do everything all in one box, right? And regardless of how complex, um, you know, or how compute intensive a particular function might be, right? So if you look on the right side of this, uh, of the screen here, you can see maybe a common typical uh, appliance that says, yeah, I can do everything. I can do ADC, I can do WAF, I can do DDoS, I can do this, I can do that. I can do it all in one, in, in one product, right? Now, the truth is, Sounds good, you know, it sounds good, right, from keeping things simple, right, it's all in one box, all one management, you know, console and so on, sounds good. Uh, but the truth is, is that a lot of times you're compromised on the functions and capabilities and you start turning these things on and you're also compromised on the performance, right? And you still have some of those less than desirable attributes such as still a fixed function hardware appliance, right? Uh, it's still cost efficient, in, inefficient in terms of it, you know, usually having a premium price tag. So what, you know, what would be an alternative, right? So if we look at uh, the platform on the left-hand side, uh, what's represented there is the Array Network Functions platform. Um, and this is conceptual, right? So let's just say in this instance, you know, we have a, a medium instance running an Array application delivery controller, and we have a medium or a large instance running a positive technologies application firewall. Um, you know, they're both essentially virtual appliances, right? and they're running on their own VM um, on the platform. And what do we get in terms of some of the positives, right? So, of course, with positive technologies, you're getting that visionary application security. You're getting that best of breed um, web app firewall capability, right? Um, you're getting guaranteed performance. Um, these aren't competing with each other. They're all running in their own instance with their own resources. They're getting a high level of performance. They're getting guaranteed performance. Superior agility, this is what you wanted today. Maybe tomorrow you want to run it on a bigger size instance. Go ahead and do it, right? Maybe tomorrow you want to have another function on the platform to complement these functions. Go ahead and do it. You want to move some of these software and licenses for whatever reason to, you know, a general purpose virtualized environment, you can do it, right? An outstanding value. Um, if I compare the price of, you know, the platform with the Array and the PT software, and I compare that to what you might be paying for one of these premium integrated appliances, you're saving a lot of money too. So uh, you know, comparing the two approaches, this is one example of how the platform approach can really benefit a lot of organizations. And I wanted to briefly touch on this because, you know, we've talked about Gartner and we've talked about, you know, the, the PT application firewall and it being a very robust uh, application firewall. The same thing holds true with the Array Virtual Application Delivery Controller, right? Um, you know, you go down the whole checklist, um, you know, the server load balancing, the SSL offload, the acceleration functions, right? We talked about that. They gotta be fast, available, dynamic, secure, all these things, right? All these features and capabilities are all in the Array Application Delivery Controller, the virtual ADC. Um, as I said, you know, we were the first to, to do this, to have all these features. Um, and also, as I mentioned, for example, all of SoftLayer, IBM Bluemix's load balancing is based on this. 
right? So it's serving a ton of different customers and it's serving them well, very reliably. The product wouldn't survive in that environment without being a best of breed solution. So you're looking at, you know, a very strong ADC product and a very strong web app firewall product that are going to be running on that platform. Another example is, you know, in that previous example, I showed the platform running an ADC and running a WAF, right? Or, and I said potentially it could run another function, you know, different functions, whatever is required for a particular application. The other way to approach this is if you like all those agility attributes that I've been talking about, you could just consolidate a bunch of PT web app firewalls on the platform, right? So let's say that you had a lot of applications in, in your traditional model. Um, you had some web app firewalls that were servicing the needs of those, you know, applications independently. You could go from a model that looked like this to a much more forward model looking model that looks something like this, where you've essentially got two network functions platforms from Array and you've stocked them up and you've really consolidated uh, a number of different uh, PT virtual application firewalls. Extremely streamlined, extremely flexible, high performance, all the benefits we talked about for the platform. So that's another slice on things. Now to go back and talk about uh, potentially uh, you know, running uh, you know, multiple different functions on the platform, you know, one of the things that we see uh, that we've been talking to customers about is, is you know, there's a lot of HTTPS traffic uh, that's, you know, coming in to an application or that's, you know, traversing the network or the data center at different points, and you may want to apply application-level security to, you know, those traffic flows, to those traffic streams, right? How can you benefit from this platform? Well, you put the, you know, the array uh, virtual application delivery controller as the entry point. It offloads and intercepts SSL, decrypts that traffic, and is then able to pass that traffic to um, positive technology web app firewall or other third-party security functions. You link them, uh, orchestrate them, chain them in the way that uh, you think makes sense for a particular traffic flow, whether it's inbound or outbound. And then on the other side, you bookend it with an array virtual ADC, again, to offload the re-encryption of that traffic, send it on its way, uh, wherever it's going to go to the server, et cetera, right? So you can build a solution here where you have a security platform um, that can look inside of self-contained within one platform can provide uh, security, inspection, protection, et cetera, et cetera, for HTTPS traffic. So uh, another uh, potential solution there. There are more, um, but I want to make sure that I left a little bit of time here in case there are some questions and answers. Um, but that concludes the, uh, the main part of today's live webinar. So let me, uh, let me check here and see while I'm checking if anybody has any questions or so on. Go ahead and enter them in now. So while we're waiting here for people to enter their questions, I'm actually going to open it up, Rich, and back to Roy, uh, just to see if there are any, um, any final thoughts you want to convey in the last five minutes or so here regarding, uh, you know, regarding the solution or our respective companies. I would just like to add something from a product perspective. Um, we're talking best to breed. For example, with um, the web application firewall from Positive Technologies and the other uh, security solutions that will be running on the platform, best of breed um, DDoS and other security related applications, all running uh, at the same time in the right order. So that's, that's one example of value. The other value, everyone always talks about return on investment will find this to be a less expensive solution than a platform that runs all of these in one appliance, but they don't have dedicated hardware to each of the security solutions. So if you turn on WAF, if you turn on DDoS, or whatever it is that you turn on, it will impact the performance of the load balancing capability. With the AVX, you don't have that issue because the each instance has dedicated hardware. And 
that's basically all I would like to add. So we do have some questions here. So um, actually, we have some, uh, I guess, some very tactical questions here uh, with respect to you know getting access to the presentation or recording. Uh, when I do follow up, and um, one of the things I, you know, I'm, I'm going to see if this works here. Since I'm sharing my screen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can escape from this screen here and quickly switch over and see if I have this solution brief up. So I'm going to try to move some of these Q&A boxes out of the way here. And you know this this here is the um, you know the solution brief that we we have on the platform. So in addition to the presentation, which will be distributed uh, direct, the PDF version will be distributed directly after uh, today's webinar. I'm also going to be attaching the PDF of this uh, solution brief, which goes over everything. Right, it goes over uh, the benefits of the PT application firewall, benefits of the platform and also the, um, I talked about the, the whole being greater than the sum of its parts and really tying everything together with the Array ADC, the PT application firewall, uh, and the platform running together and what some of those benefits are. So I wanted to quickly just, uh, quickly just show you that. Um, in, in as far as the recording and the video, uh, generally our platform makes that available to us about two days after the webinar and then it takes us maybe a day or so to get it edited and put up. Uh, so Array does have a YouTube channel. It's uh, YouTube. Uh, dot com slash array TV and uh, you know we'll send out a notification when that uh, when that video is available um, a couple of questions here which is you know how do I how do I go about purchasing this thing or how do I buy a license uh, you know for the uh, PT WAF for the platform right and we've designed this a couple of different ways um, so that we can accommodate um, uh, like different purchase models or different ways that customers are buying these products, right? So, you know, if you are, let's say, you know, used to buying Array products and you buy either directly from Array or you buy through an Array uh, reseller and, and so on, um, we've actually, you know, kind of done the work here and we have, Array has SKUs on our price list for uh, the PT application firewall, right? So, you can go to your partner or you can come to Array. You can order the platform, the Array software, the PT software. You can order all that and it will all come through that, uh, that buying channel that you're used to, right? But um, let's say that, you know, you happen to have a, a platform or you buy a platform and, you know, but, but you have other, you know, channels and other direct relationships or a relationship with PT and that's how you buy your software. You can go ahead and buy the software from the vendors you work with or from the partners that you work with, and then either you or the partner can essentially, you know, load that up into the system um, and get everything up and running, right? So either way, either you want to buy it from Array, through Array, or an Array partner, we're good. We're ready to do that. If you want to buy it directly from PT or from a PT partner, um, you know, we can do that as well. So uh, very flexible. Um, the one thing that uh, I want to add as well is that, um, you know, it's not just the marketing materials here. We have gone through and uh, things like deployment guides and uh, uh, similar materials that help you get up and running with having these, you know, uh, software functions running on the platform. But we've gone ahead and uh, taken care of that as well. Rich, you on that? Yeah, I want, this is Rich. I want to add something. Paul was talking about buying models. I anticipate that 90 plus percent will go through the channel through partners. Uh, so the uh, people that are you know, familiar with the products that are capable of installing the products as well. So that's just you know in my mind's eye that's the way I see the majority of, uh, for example, positive technologies getting to an end user will be through a channel. Uh, so good question here is how is the PT WAF how is its size throughput etc. Um, Roy, this is probably a good, I mean, I know the answer, but it's probably a good one for you to talk to. Uh, but I'll talk to the aspects of it for, you know, for our platform, right? So if you look at the SKUs that we have, we have, you know, PT WAF, I believe 100. We have PT, uh, or sorry, PTAF 500 and, you know, PTAF gig essentially, right? And what we've done is we've mapped those, we've done through performance testing, we've mapped those to, if you want to run um, PTAF 100, you need, let's say, a small instance. 
However, if you want to run a PTAF, you know, 500 or gig, you need either a medium or a large instance, right? So we've done a lot of that mapping um, so that you, you know, we don't have to figure all that stuff out, right? We can talk about what, how much throughput do you need. We go, okay, that's the model you need. This is the SKU. And if that's the case, you're going to need to run it on this size of an instance on the platform. So we've done a lot of that work. But, Roy, anything else that you want to add in terms of, you know, how the PTAF uh, is, is sized and or sold? No, I mean, that, that sums it up. So when we talk about, you know, 100, 500, 1 gig, obviously that's the throughput um, mechanisms. And we also look at requests per second. So sometimes requests per second also balance out what the throughput requirements are. But I think the other point to remember here is that these devices can be clustered as well. So because we're running with, obviously, a low balancing capability, we can also do virtual clustering, which means you can you know, distribute the, the requests across different areas. And finally, I'd add to that is that there's no geographic or you know locational requirement for these devices. As long as they've got the connectivity capability, you can position them where you want to. So you know, we can, if required, um, you know, go up to 10 gig. So there is a, a lot of power there. But for uh, the design and the way that we're working with Array, uh, you know, we have three very effective models there. Uh, and there are different modes of uh, deployment as well and how you can configure those. So you can have active, 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 passive type configuration. So there's a lot of flexibility about how the deployment models are, are delivered to the customers. So we're at the top, almost at the top of the hour here, but we have one last question. I'm going to try to sneak it in for those of you that want to hang on for just a, a couple moments here. So it's a great question too, which is how do I manage the network functions or the virtual appliances that are running on the AVX platform. And, you know, we had a lot of material to get through today, so we weren't able to dive into uh, the web UI or the GUI for the Array AVX platform. We have other webinars, um, other ways to be able to uh, share that with you, even if you want to, you know, connect with us afterwards and have us demonstrate that to you. But there's tremendous power in the platform GUI where you can log in there and you will see uh, very visually, right, you'll see, you know, what are the instances that I've unlocked in terms of capacity on the platform? What do I have riding on those? You can click into those and get the performance metrics, a lot of other, uh, a lot of other metrics for those particular functions. You can also click into a screen where you can see, you know, how is the traffic flow moving through the platform? How are the, uh, the virtual appliances and the network functions, how are they linked up, right? You can create different linkages for different uh, traffic flows. So very powerful there, probably best described, you know, shared in its own webinar or, or shared in a demonstration, but, the, but there is a lot of power there. So um, I'm going to take a quick last look here, but I'm not seeing uh, any further questions in the chat or the QA window. So um, I, we used all our time, and I think we covered um, a lot of great material here. So before we hop off, though, I want to uh, absolutely want to thank uh, Roy, uh, for joining us here today and uh, you know presenting that information on the PT application firewall, but also we want to you know thank Rich and Roy as well for for the work that's gone into getting us to this point. And uh, there was a, actually a lot of people on today's webinar, more than I expected. And I want to thank all of you for taking time to uh, join us today as well. So with that, uh, we'll conclude today's webinar. Thank you, everybody, and uh, hope to see you on a future webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Rich. Speak to you again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye now.